Hi guys, it's Keith from IELTS Speaking Success. And this week, I had the pleasure of interviewing Luke Thompson from Luke's English Podcast. Luke is a fantastic teacher and an even better comedian. So in my series of videos, Native Speakers Do IELTS, I put Luke on the hotspot and he does the IELTS speaking test. Do you think he's going to do well on the IELTS speaking test? Listen in and find out. Hi, Luke. Hello, Keith. How are you today? I'm good today. Very well, thank you. And listen, thank you very much for coming to join me and um, those who are watching on IELTS Speaking Success. It's really, really great to see you here and to have you here. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting me onto your channel. I'm looking forward to having my English tested. I haven't done the IELTS test for a while. Right. I mean, you, you've been in the English teaching game for quite a while, right? Yeah, it's been um, over 18 years now. Wow, over 18 years. And during that time, I believe you've taught a bit of IELTS as well? Yeah, I've done IELTS courses. I, I did some one-to-one -one stuff and I've done some group classes with IELTS. Yeah, I've done, I've done my fair share. Right, brilliant. Well, today we're going to put you on the spot and we're going to put yeah. you um, to the test, literally, with the IELTS speaking test mm -hmm. um, and see how you do. So all of the, the kind of the students will get a chance to listen to some very natural English um, and you were mentioning before that you're from the Midlands, though you don't quite have the, the Brummie accent. Yeah, I'm from the Midlands. I've also spent lots of time in West London, too, growing up. Um, but yeah, I don't really have uh, a Midlands accent. It kind of comes back a little bit when I go back and see my friends. But um, normally, I just sort of speak like this is my normal voice these days. Right. I have the same thing. I'm from Manchester, and you would never guess. <laughs> yeah, the accent's kind of gone there. It's yeah. gone, yeah. I guess living out of the country for so long. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, listen, Luke, we're going to talk a little bit about, um, more about you, yourself and, and Luke's English podcast later. But if you're ready, okay. should we get into the, into the test? Yeah, I think I'm ready. Do you think there's any chance that I won't pass? I mean, what, you know, uh, what, what score am I looking for? Is it like yep. 7.5 to, to get into university or something? 7.5 <laughs> to get into university. And, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll do my best. Do your best. Don't worry, just relax, take a deep breath. <laughs> it's, not, it's not just the English, is it? It's, it's also uh, just like dealing with the exam tasks. They can be quite they tricky They can be challenging, sometimes. absolutely, because you've got you've to do lots of things at the same time, right? You've got to get the idea, you've got to express it, you've got to be fluent, you've got to use some quite wide range of vocabulary and grammar and have really good pronunciation, so like no pressure. Oh, God, how, how is it? What, what about rambling? Is that Rambling, frowned upon? Definitely. You don't get to university if you ramble. Definitely not. Oh, God, this is going to be more difficult than I thought. Are you a rambler? That's my, that's, oh, very much so. Absolutely. I'm, I ramble all, all around the internet. You can, <laughs> you can ramble in part three. That's a good yes. time to ramble. So okay. if you can um, keep your rambling instincts in okay. control. I'll, until I'll keep part it in three. check. I'll keep it in check. Uh, not the language. I'll keep it in English. I'll give I'll you keep a my English in check. Yes. Brilliant. I'll say <laughs> ramble now when you're ready to ramble. <laughs> <laughs> right. Fantastic. So let's, um, let's kick off. So I'm going to do this kind of semi-formally. So it feels like the test, but obviously not too formally. Mm -hmm. So this is the IELTS speaking test taking place today, and I don't know what day it is. I think it's Wednesday, the 11th of December. Um, the examiner is Keith, and I'm here with uh, Luke. So could you tell me your full name, please? Yeah, my full name is uh, Luke Thompson. I do have a middle name too. It's Luke Daniel Thompson. Great. So what shall I call you? You can call me Luke. Luke, fantastic. Yeah. So Luke, in the first part of this test, I'm going to ask you some questions about yourself. Let's talk first of all about your house. So do you live in a house or a flat? I live in a flat. So it's, uh, it's part of a, a, a terrace, a terrace of, of uh, Housemanian Terrace in Paris. You know those old uh, Housemanian buildings all built by, all designed by a man called Houseman, amazingly enough. <laughs> Um, so I live in one of those in Paris. Great. And what's your favourite room? Oh, that's a difficult one. I like the main room. So we've got a, a, a main room, which is like a kitchen, dining room, living room, 
and it's quite spacious. There's a nice uh, fireplace, so we can actually have uh, log fires going in, in, in very cold uh, nights. And uh, we've got the sofas in there and the kitchen. It's nice to be able to just spend most of your time in there. You can prepare food. You can kind of mess around in the living room. It's all there, and it's a very pleasant place to be, basically. And that's my favourite. And is there anything you would like to change about that room? Yeah, we need to put more uh, artwork on the walls because uh, we moved in, well, it's a year ago now, but uh, things move very slowly around here. and um, We haven't put up enough uh, artwork. So we're looking for pictures, paintings, designs and things that will go on the walls. Nice. So I'm going to move on and talk about languages okay. next. Um, okay. Which languages do you speak? I speak English and I speak some French as well. I live in France. Uh, my French should be better than it is, but uh, I do speak some French every day. I go out to the, you know, to the bakery, the boulangerie and buy my bread and uh, sort of chat to people I, I meet in the streets. I pick up my daughter from the crash and I speak a bit French there. So yeah, my French is kind of coming along. Great. And what are the common languages in your country? Well, in, in, in France or in England? In England. In England, the common languages, well, you know, obviously English in its various uh, sort of styles, so different accents and dialects and things. Uh, other accents, well, in the United Kingdom, we've got obviously Welsh uh, and uh, is it um, Scots Gaelic, I think is the, the, the term mm -hmm. for, the, for the language in Scotland. <laughs> um, and uh, so there are a few, and I, I think because we've got large sort of uh, Asian communities like uh, Punjabi might be spoken um and uh, various other uh, bits of language mostly it's english though that's the, the right. majority and would you like to learn a new language well yeah i mean I, I really do need to improve my french so actually i'm getting more and more into it so uh, i mean i should know as an english teacher and someone who helps people learn languages i should know a thing or two about learning french and you know i'm starting to apply the things that i say on my podcast to my actual life i've been reading uh, comic books in french which i find to be very useful because I can, you know, follow the story. There's pictures to make it easy for me. Uh, and it allows <laughs> me to kind of just focus on the language. It's like get dealt out to you in nice little chunks rather than just plain text. Right. It's quite nice to have the cartoons too. You know, I like to keep it simple. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go move on now and make it complicated for you because the next okay. topic is the sky. Do you often look at the sky? Yes, I do. I love looking at the sky. Hmm. Um, in Paris, sometimes we get beautiful sunsets and uh, it's, it's fantastic to look out the window and you know, see the sky there. Also, when I'm in the countryside, uh, back home, certainly in England, I'll often be looking at the sky, looking for birds because uh, my family, we all, for some reason, are bird watchers. We love uh, you know, identifying different birds and, and things. And it's always interesting to have a sort of scan of the horizon wherever you are just to see if there's any bird life out there and you, it's often it's quite surprising the number of times you see some fairly rare and interesting birds just by having a look around um and nice. so, so yeah i'm often looking at the sky and uh, uh, birds <laughs> do you know much about the stars and planets well i mean there's so much to know um, I know little things. I know, for example, some constellations. I know what Orion looks like. I know what, is it the Great Bear or the the Plough is what we used to call it in my family, and the North Star and some things like that. But no, not really. I, I don't understand most of it. It's incredibly complicated. Right. Yeah. Good. So I'm going to move on now to part two of the test. Okay. Um, so this is where I give you a topic. You're going to talk for one to two minutes and you have a minute to prepare. So if you need pen and paper, you can grab some now. Look at that. Some here. He's on the ball. Excellent. I'm prepared. <laughs> so I'm going to put this, I'm going to try and put this into mm -hmm. the chat box so that you can see it. Okay. Now bear with me. Send that over. Send the chat over. Right. It's sent over. Can you... Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, there it is. Come on, start chat. Okay. Nosy. Okay, it must be in the, I must be in a different chat. 
This is exciting, isn't it? That is strange. You've got it? I've got it, Keith. Yes. So this is your topic, right? It's a good one as well. It's describe a photograph in your home. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you one minute to prepare. Okay. Go for it. I hope I'm right. doing okay so far. I think nervous. you're doing. I think you're doing pretty good oh, oh, so yeah, far. Not bad at all. all right. I think you're on the way. I think you're probably about level four by now. So you're working four. your way up. Yeah. Pre intermediate. Pre intermediate. You'd probably right. get just into kindergarten, maybe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you'll be at university by the time we're in part three. Okay, come on. Brilliant. Come on, Luke. You can do it. I'm ready. Oh, that's the first mistake all students make. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Oh, so God. Ready I'm not ready then. Up. I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait a minute. I've got five extra seconds. Just a second. Um... Right. So your time is up. Now, remember, you've got one to two minutes for this. Don't worry if I interrupt you. I will tell you when the time is up. Can you start yeah. speaking when you're ready, Luke? Okay. So I'd like to describe a photograph that's in my home. Um, it's a photograph of uh, my wife and me standing on top of uh, a volcano on top of a mountain. I mean, it wasn't a volcano on top of a mountain. I mean, that we were standing on top of the volcano, which was also a mountain. So we were standing on top of it and we've got our arms outstretched like this. Uh, my wife's holding a flag in one arm. I've got a sign which shows how the altitude that we're at. I think it was 3,726 3, meters up. And uh, this was taken by a random stranger uh, uh, on holiday in Indonesia. So we were on the island of um, Lombok. And Lombok has an active volt volcano on it, which is known as Rinjani. And uh, we were reading the, the guidebooks and stuff, and we found uh, this thing that you could do, which is like a three or four day hike up Rinjani. This sounds fun, we thought. So we kind of went for it. And it turned into the most uh, difficult experience of our lives it was kind of like you could make a documentary film about what we went through sort of thing and <laughs> it was incredibly tough and hard going climbing up this thing it's basically like climbing up sand as well because you kind of go two steps up and then you slide back again and in just very very tough you camped on the mountain <laughs> started climbing at two in the morning and uh freezing cold temperatures when you get to further up and the wind is whipping across and you're climbing up very narrow little sort of paths with huge drops down either side and um, it was extremely tiring but we made it to the top it seemed like the most difficult thing ever I mean it was seemed almost impossible to, to make it all the way up there but we managed to do it and the photo was there and, and now this um, this sort of mountain climbing experience has become the benchmark of like, if we can do that, we can do anything. Fantastic. I'm going to stop you there. Great. Thank you very much. That was great. Good. Now, okay. side, side note, it's time to ramble. We're going on to part three. <laughs> um, okay. So in part three, I'm going to ask you some more um, questions related to what we've just talked about. Okay. Mm -hmm. So first of all, let's talk about photographs. Um, is it easy to make or to take good photographs? It's easier than it used to be. I think, um, obviously now we've got, uh, smartphones that have amazing cameras in them and they do so much, uh, just automatically and you can apply filters and you can edit the, the, the photos very, very easily. It's incredible what we've got at our fingertips now. Whereas, you know, 30 years ago or whenever it was, even before digital cameras came in, you know, you had to, the, the, the process of taking photos with film and then developing that film was just incredibly complicated, uh, but somehow very beautiful, like the, the aesthetic of having a, um, a, uh, an analog uh, photograph uh, taken through film is beautiful. But um, uh, so, yeah, I think that, I f I've forgotten the question, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, fine. Easy to make photos, but that's easy good to make that's, photos. That, that, that's my cue to cut you off and go to the next question. Okay. Do you think that people take too many far, too many photos at parties, not parties at photos, photos yeah. at parties instead of enjoying the party? 
Um, there's, there's, there, to an extent, especially these days with Instagram, people are spending more time taking the photo of the thing they're doing rather than just actually doing it and living it. Uh, you, yeah, parties, you see people taking photos of the food and you, you can't eat, you know, you want to start eating the food, but you can't because you've got to pose for a photo with everyone, you know, about to eat the food and, you know, that can be uh, annoying. So, um, uh, yeah, I think to an extent, sometimes people do take too many photos at parties rather than just enjoying the party. Yeah, I think it's right. a feature of modern life. And what do you think are the advantages and disadvantages of sharing photos online? Well, obviously, the advantages are that you can share things so easily with your friends and relatives in other places. Like I have a WhatsApp group with my parents and, and we send photos and share things all the time. So that's a really great way to keep in touch with people. It's amazing. It's like, you know, we, we don't live that far away from each other. But the, obviously the downside is that um, those photos are subject to, you know, hacks and things like that. And you could have your personal photographs um, distributed online somehow. Um, you don't necessarily have the control over your own image that you used to have any uh, in the olden days. Copyright, things like that. You can put your photos online, but people just take them and use them. Uh, so there are sort of all kinds of uh, problems, a myriad of different uh, issues arising from the the, the, the digitization of photos and, and sharing them on, online. But I think broadly it's probably okay. I think it seems quite good, really. Right. And um, would you say that photography is an art? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yes, definitely. Um, taking a, a great photograph is very difficult You've got to obviously get all the lighting right and the framing of it right, but also just sort of choosing the right subject at the right moment. And you can pick something very sort of uh, extraordinary. Um, I mean, I'm just thinking of, you know, photographing people that you get these famous photographs of like rock musicians and stuff. And they're just sort of in the middle of doing something or something that captures the essence of that person. Yeah, it's definitely an art form. Mm. Mm. And uh, when are photos more effective than words? Um, when are photos more effective than words? Well, I suppose when you just want to say something, it's just a single image can somehow broadcast an idea internationally in a way that words can never do. Like words are sort of secondary in a way that they, they are there to as a substitute or a symbol of something but photographs are so much more direct in in their sort of uh in in the way that they can communicate a message i mean i'm just trying to think of examples famous examples of this i mean i can't think of any famous <laughs> examples at the moment off the top of my head can i i mean a photograph of 9 11 for example um i mean that is so powerful and um those photographs were distributed all around the world and just i think that humans are visual before they are you know, but they focus on the visual things rather than the language first. You see it when you do a PowerPoint presentation. If you put a picture up there, people just immediately look at it. So, um, yes, I think so. Fantastic. And again? That... Like, again, I'm rambling so much, I can't remember the question, the original question. You've got it. But that brings us to the end of the speaking test. Okay, great. That's it. Brilliant. <laughs> I did it. Wow. I made it. I made it all the way to the end. You made it to the end. You got out of kindergarten. You went into primary, secondary school. I think I'd get, I'd let you into my university. Yeah, really? So yeah. do I get the, uh, I mean, people are going to want to know now what, uh, what band what, I got. What score you what got, score what band you was. got. I mean, you did shine in part two and part three. Definitely. I uh -huh. thought, yeah, I thought I love the story in part two about the, on the mountain after I understood oh, yes. the, about the volcano being where the volcano <laughs> was, but the, the story <laughs> behind it was great. It was yeah. good because it was, it was nicely, you talked about that not just the photo, but what happened, how it was taken. There's kind of the story behind it was great. I thought that was nice. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. And then part three, a bit of rambling, but some nice fluency. I tell you what, though, finding the examples, that's hard, isn't it? Getting your example, like in the photo at the end. Yeah. About the uh, well, empire. I, I, I kept finding that I was you know i have a tendency to go off on tangents and you know that's sort of that's where the rambling comes from so i kind of go from one thing to the next thing and then i'm talking about photographs i couldn't remember what the original question was which i think is a problem because you've always got to try i think in the ielts speaking exam and the writing you've always got to remember you you must answer the question you always come back to the question 
yes. and nail it. Um, so I was, I suddenly had this moment of stress of like, oh my God, you know, I need to bring it back to the question book. Oh, what was it? You've forgotten the question. I think that happens yeah. to a lot of people. Yeah, it's really hard yeah. to stay focused, right? Yes, and, it is. Uh, yeah. To give kind of structured answers. And, and weirdly, I'm a native speaker. I mean, uh, and I felt nervous during right. doing the test. I, yes. It's weird, isn't it? Just the conditions. Someone, as soon as someone tells you it's a test, just test conditions apply suddenly. Yeah. Yeah. And that, you start to kind of, oh, I'm being tested, you know. And so, that, that is, it is weird. It is weird, especially because it's not even a real test, right? It's yeah. just, it's even a, <laughs> it's just a, a mock just test. A mock. Yeah. But interesting. So, yes. Yeah, weird. The psychology, I think, you know, IELTS, there's a lot of psychology involved um, yeah. in, in the way you approach the exam and being ready for the sort of stress and unease that you will experience during the test is very important to prepare for. Uh, and I think that, you know, doing practice in timed conditions in yeah. sort of exam conditions trying to recreate the the level of discomfort and awkwardness you're going to feel when you're doing it i mean it's not very pleasant you know uh, but it's worth kind of clearing stuff away and just focusing on what you're doing and timing yourself it helps to prepare for the stress visiting the test center before the test day so you know where it is you know right. those things to as ways of limiting stress I think always- those are good tips because I, I totally agree. I think one of the biggest problems is is nerves. People just mm-hmm. crack under the nerves. I've seen a lot of candidates who just get so nervous um, that they, they just, you can almost see them sweating that they just cannot yeah. keep it together. And it's really hard. It is a psychological battle. Mm. So I like your tips. Those are good. On a, on a kind of a very wide general note, what kind of um, advice would you give English learners to, to help improve their English and for IELTS maybe? Wow, well, there's just, there's tons. I mean, there's so much to say. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, when you, when you approach the learning of English, just like any other language, I suppose it can be quite overwhelming depending on where you are on the scale. But often like people get stuck in the intermediate plateau. They might get stuck at around a sort of a five or a five and a half or six or something, and they really need to get up to that more advanced level of seven or something. So breaching the intermediate plateau can be very difficult. And, um, you know, there, I guess it's just a question of the first thing, right, is that you've, you've actually just got to do things. Just do something in English every single day. Just connect with English on a regular basis because it's about time and practice and just multiply time and practice and eventually progress will will happen it's you know it's just a question of just being with the language enough but that requires motivation so the first thing is you've got to just really really want it and you you can't just want english for something else you know you can't just want it in order to achieve something else you've got to want to really learn to get a voice in english to find uh the rhythm of english and to actually want to learn the language just for the the sake of learning it not just as a stopgap to something else, you know? So that's the thing. You've got to find your personal reasons for really sort of getting into using the language and enjoying it. And sort of several several ways. There's the active approach and the more passive approach. I think you've got to try and do both. So in terms of the passive stuff, it's, you know, all that stuff about language acquisition, you know, uh, the idea that basically if you just expose yourself to enough language and you're into it, you're really, you know, interested in it, then it'll kind of rub off on you. You kind of pick it up, you acquire mm. it as a part of a natural process. So that basically means just listening a lot, reading a lot uh, and, and finding things that you enjoy rather than just like, I'll listen to the news, even though I don't enjoy listening to the news at all. I'll listen to the BBC world service or something, or I'll read the newspaper, even though that brings me no pleasure at all. Mm. You've got to try and find things that you really enjoy doing. So find things you enjoy reading and, and enjoy listening uh, to. And in terms of the active stuff, it's basically that English is, you know, you've got to remember that English is is something that you do, not something that you just know. So you've got Mm. to focus on being able to do things rather than just knowing stuff. So whenever you're learning vocab, you've got to try and use it um, and be aware of things like how certain phrases fit into sentences so not just a phrase on its own, it's got to be put into a sentence and then that, that sentence has to mean something. And you've got to then use that sentence as well. 
if you don't go through the whole process, you're never going to learn it. It's got to go in and out and back in again and, and, and all that stuff. So, you know, recording vocab, make sure it's done with the right level of detail and uh, test yourself as well. Uh, speak to yourself. Uh, just <laughs> chat away to yourself. How because, do you speak to yourself? So just like, so I'm, I'm going to be speaking to Keith in a minute, so I better get ready. What shall we, what, what shall we do? No, don't say we, because that sounds, makes you sound like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Uh, that, what shall I do? Yes. You know, or also like, oh, I'm in the shower. Look, there's the there's the shower curtain, and uh, I've got some towels ready, and so I'm <laughs> going to wash my hair. You know, just just kind of like get a monologue going. It's very important it because the English has to come out. It can't just stay rattling around in there. It's got to be used. Right. Yeah. So I could go on, and there's tons of stuff that could be said. Oh, but a mix of active and passive practice. I think that's great. I think that the more the better. I, I love the idea, yes, of, of speaking to yourself because I think actually we all speak to ourselves, even in our native tongues, right? We're always yeah. stuff going around in your head. So maybe it's yeah. just switching that and doing it in, in the other language, in English. And actually doing it out loud as well. I know it seems strange to be talking to yourself. It's a bit odd, but actually it's, uh, it's fine. It's a very good way to practice and, and to get your mouth around the language. Yeah. And nowadays, you know, with the um, the mobile phones, headsets, it's quite normal to see people walking down the street talking yeah. to themselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, 10 years ago, you might get locked up. But I think today it's not too bad. You can do it. Here's what people could do. They could just record one half of a conversation, right? So just spend half an hour just recording one half of a conversation, imagining what the other side is. And then they play that back to themselves with their headset while they're walking around and just have a conversation with themselves. Yeah, there's nothing weird about that. Nothing at all. <laughs> I love it's that. A bit weird. It's that a bit weird, great, though. but linguistically great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> so, Luke, I mean, tell us. I mean, we didn't really talk much about you at the start. We jumped straight in, but tell us a bit about you and what you do. Um, and so on. So I, I'm a I'm a podcaster. So I've got a podcast for learners of English. Some of your viewers might know about it. It's called Luke's English Podcast. They do, do they? Mm. I've got a mug here. I've got like a Luke's English Podcast mug. That's the logo. Wow! How do podcast. we get one of those? That's much limited better than edition my IKEA. They're they're not available anymore. They're limited edition. So Seriously? I don't know if you've got yeah if, viewers. If you've got one of these, then you know eBay. That might be worth oh six pounds, seven. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so anyway, Luke's English podcast, I've been doing it for over 10 years. And basically, uh, the idea is it's sort of like a radio show for learners of English It's something for learners of English to, to listen to regularly and something that they can just kind of enjoy listening to. It's just a person speaking to them on an, in a normal way, you know, just on a normal human level, uh, rather than it being like a presentation by the British council or the BBC. Instead, it's just like, you know, someone just talking to you like a human. And uh, I talk about different subjects. I teach stuff sometimes. Uh, I have guests on. There's a lot of stupid humor, a lot of uh, kind of comedy rambling and nonsense, and also, in, you know, serious things from time to time. So it's a mix of all that stuff. It's basically supposed to be an entertaining thing for learners of English to, to listen to in order to listen more, you know. Listening, listening, listening. You know, we, we talked earlier about uh, language acquisition and listening a lot is important. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So how can people find you? Yeah, so so probably the best way is online to go to teacherluke.co.uk. That's the website. Uh, or you can get my app uh, on your phone, which is just Luke's English Podcast app. Uh, just search the app store for Luke's English Podcast app and uh, you'll be able to find it. That's where you'll get all of the episodes and bonus stuff in the app and all that kind of thing. Otherwise, just go to teacherluke.co.uk for the website. And it's on iTunes and all the usual places. Fantastic. Brilliant. That sounds great. It sounds really useful because you were talking about that environment of English, surrounding yeah. yourself in English. Podcasts are fantastic for that. Exactly. And you can have someone speaking into your he ed uh, headphones, headphones like this, as your yeah, earphones, headphones, which, whichever one you choose. Uh, and it's, you know, it's just a nice thing, you know, people kind of are riding the bus and going around, mm. walking around town and they're listening to English all the time. And I think it works as well. I'm really happy really. with it. 
It's nice, you know, yeah. I love podcasts. I listen, to, I listen to podcasts all the time. Like when yeah. I'm walking, when I'm cooking in the house. It is, there's something kind of mystical about this voice coming into your headphones. Yeah, it's though, quite intimate, really. Yeah, I, mean, I was I exactly. was saying this to a, to a friend the other day that uh, uh, you, you never like listen to a podcast together. You don't kind of gather around a podcast and listen to it together. Right. It's only something you only ever listen to on your own, really. Yeah. And so that, there is that sort of intimate connection between a listener and, a, and the podcaster, which kind of makes it perfect for, for learning English, I think. What's your favourite podcast? Gosh, I listen to loads. I listen to a lot by the BBC. So yeah. interestingly, Friday night comedy show, mm -hmm. I like. Um, yeah. I listen to the wrap, wrap Up the Week, I think it's called, which uh -huh. is a, kind of a weekly wrap up of the week news. The, the news that goes under yeah, the radar, one. they say. Yeah, the yes. week. Yes, I know. The that. week um, from the week magazine. You don't listen to Mark and Simon then, uh, Mark Kermode and Simon Mayo, by any chance. No. Oh, you must listen to that. That's fantastic. What do they yeah. talk about? It's the film reviews. Ah. But it's about kind of everything else. It's not just about film reviews. They end up kind of talking about all kinds of other things too. It's an absolute institution in, in the podcasting world. You, you must listen to it. It's still, I think, one of the most popular ones. Mark, uh, Mark Kermode and Simon Mayo's, or Kermode and Mayo's Film Review, I think it's called. Is that on the My BBC? Yeah. Right. Uh, five, Radio 5, 5 Live. Yeah. I'm going to check it out. Oh, you see, never, never listen to Radio 5. That's the trouble. Um, I, I will check Radio it out. Radio. Yes, you must. Yes, it's and I'll put, the, um, I'll put the link in the show notes as well so everybody can, can have a look. Um, brilliant. What about you? What podcast do you listen to? Um, hmm, I think probably my favourite at the moment is the Adam Buxton podcast. I don't know if you know about him. Again, no. You don't, no? The, the Adam and Joe show was a programme on Channel 4 and it was like very funny sort of, sort of uh, student-y kind of uh, art school comedy stuff. Right, and then they then they went onto the BBC and went onto Six Music and had their own podcast, and it was you know a big success. And now he does his own podcast and he just interviews interesting guests, and uh, he's great. And also, I'm I'm a huge Beatles fan, and so I just listen to tons of Beatles podcasts. So my favourite ones these days are I am the Egg Pod, um, <laughs> which is just really interesting conversations about different Beatles albums, including the solo stuff. And also uh, something about the Beatles, which is like a extremely in-depth muso level discussions of everything the Beatles have ever done. And then uh, another one called Nothing Is Real, which is a couple of Irish guys who are also doing it. I can't get enough of just listening to people going on and on about the Beatles. The Beatles, how bizarre. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just, that's just that my strange. cup of tea. Right. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Right. Well, listen, we, I think we should wrap up. It's about time. Um, thank you very much, Luke, again, for coming on the show. It's brilliant. The show. It's not a show, is it? It's a video. Well, it's like a show. It's, it's like, like a, a show. show. Yeah. yeah, of course it's a show. <laughs> Thanks for coming yeah. on the show. It's, uh, it's great to, to see you here and to, to do the test. And um, for everybody listening, well, I'm going to add some show notes and everything and some analysis of the language so people can listen thank to you. that. All right. Thank you very much for inviting me onto the show. Not at uh, all. It was lots of fun. Thanks very much, Luke. Stay in touch. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, that was a blast. Thank you so much, Luke, for coming um, on the show. And also thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do subscribe, turn on the notifications so you can find out about more videos and share it with your friends as well. If you want to see some of the language that um, Luke has been using, there are full notes on my website. Just follow the link down below and you can study and practice even more there. That's it for this time. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.